not so expensive, I mean. Okay, we're back live at VMworld 2012. This is siliconangle.com, the reference point for tech innovation. We're always ahead of the trends. Go to siliconangle.com, cloud, mobile, social. We were on Flash before anyone even knew how to spell Flash. Big data, we were the first blog to cover big data. And uh, we're here with Dave Vellante with boogiebond.org. He was ahead of the, the curve as well. And we're here with Gary Ornstein, Senior Vice President of Products at Fusion IO, uh, also fellow podcaster, uh, writes for GigaOM. Do you still write for GigaOM? Once oh, in a blue once moon. Once in a blue moon. Pro yeah. Welcome, welcome back to theCUBE, CUBE Thank alumni. Thank you very much, great so, to be here. So Gary, obviously we're going to jump, we'll jump into Fusion a little bit, but you've been an industry spectator, participant, and innovator um, on the startup scene and now uh, with the growing public company with Fusion. And you live in San Francisco, so you see uh, up close the hipsters, the <laughs> enterprise, um, the cloud. Um, the whole thing. The whole thing. It's you've right here there. at our you've, doorstep. You've, you've kind of done the, the lap around the track many times yeah. as, as we have. So what's your take on this? Our, th our thesis is converged infrastructure, um, is evolving, but not, it's not radical, but, but this new data infrastructure is a better description. Uh, your CEO just validated the fact that if operating systems were being built, uh, Flash would be at the center of the conversation, which I agree with 100%. Yeah. That's changing what's known as converged infrastructure. So that's morphing, so that's one topic we want to talk about. But the other one is, um, we were in, in the, the cloud club days, early public cloud days where Amazon was really doing great work, mm -hmm. changed the startup landscape certainly, but that whole cloud migration just didn't happen in droves. Right. What's your perspective on that? Well, I think it did happen in droves, but at the same time, we've seen a huge continuation of focus on enterprise technologies. And even just in the last few weeks, the amount of funding that's happened for infrastructure plays has really been off the charts. And I think one of the reasons for that is that Cloud computing isn't a panacea for all things. Uh, enterprise companies do like to maintain some of the infrastructure on their own. And with the advances that have happened in things like flash memory as an example, we're able to do so much more with so much less. You take a couple of servers, put them full of flash memory that's replacing racks and racks and racks of storage equipment. Well now, running a high performance application or high performance database, it might not need to consider some of those cloud solutions if it's easy for me to configure. So I think that's one element of the, the shift that we've been seeing. Okay, I, I know we're, we're tight on time, but I want to get to some quick points. It's great, great conversation. Two questions and then I'll let Dave jump in. Uh, disruption, what do you see happening next from a disruption standpoint? And um, they talk about these new experiences at the keynote, that this new modern era of, of compute or data center or infrastructure. What new experiences are coming around? So key, what are the key disruptions that yeah. you're seeing? The new disruptions. Uh, well, I'm gonna, yeah, I'm going to combine them into one because I think it's, it's a simple theme. Historically, we've looked at data center and other infrastructure as a multi-tiered approach. We have an application tier, we have a database tier, and then we have a separate storage tier. But now in this world where everything's virtualized, what I see customers wanting to do more is deploy a homogeneous tier of servers. And from there, throw the services on top of that that they want to execute. That might be applications on those servers, databases, it might be software-defined storage. So these software-enabled services are now possible because we can take these servers, turn them into super servers, and they can instantly create the functionality that's needed for the enterprise infrastructure. As an example, you couldn't previously spin up a database to do you know, tens of thousands of transactions per second in a heartbeat because you'd have to wheel in a refrigerator sized storage array. Well now, if you can configure a little bit of flash memory in there, you can spin that up right away and you're off to the races. And then you combine big data. We saw demos at Google I.O. We saw one uh, recently where, you know, just this massive, you know, scale of just provisioning, you know, uh, multi-core at Cassandra, some of these spun up, like a, you know, 16 right. huge instances in, like, in a snap of a, of a finger. Yeah, and because they're, you know, a lot of those are now flash enabled, you can actually spin up not just the, the instance of the functionality, but the performance as well. Although Netflix was telling us that they have the special um, flash solid state Amazon, uh, and it was, the performance was amazing. Uh, Dave, you have Yeah, anything? so, I mean, we talk, Gary, when we talked on theCUBE two years ago upstairs, um, we talked about the, the, the gap between cloud service providers, you know, particularly Amazon in terms of its flexibility and, and tr you know, traditional IT, and we are talking off camera how that, that's changed, you know, IT has really done a good job, but, but you still got Amazon as the poster child. You saw the Glacier announcement. Sure. Um, I've talked to some CIOs, said there's no way, I'm not ever going to put my archive data in, in Glacier. It's just, I'm not going to do it because of the, the very high profile failures that they've had and the emails that they sent saying, sorry, we lost your data. We don't really know how to get it back. Right. You know, apologize for the inconvenience. We'll give you credit for the time that you were down. Um, 
my question is, are those parallel tracks that sort of, you know, Amazon cloud track, the consumer cloud, small business cloud, developer cloud, and the enterprise cloud now, the, the private cloud, are they on parallel tracks and do those two worlds ever come together and collide? In your you know, I think there's different use cases. I mean, people, you know, are, it's easy to get started on cloud computing, you can dial it up, you don't have to do anything, uh, but it does get expensive over time. Uh, the operating bills get large. You know, in, in, in the U.S., we have a tendency when the operating bills get large, we want to capitalize that. That's just, that's more of a finance uh, cultural item than a technology item. And so I think we'll always have both tracks. They serve different purposes, e both equally valuable. But I think the important point that John was making earlier is that the flexibility of what you can do with so little, a few industry standard servers, a few flash memory devices, and now you're able to do so much more that you know we, it, it's going to be a real horse race. And I think both sides have the uh, the tools and the technologies to carry things forward. So cloud may not be the graveyard for IT that a lot of people <laughs> predict. Maybe not, <laughs> yeah. Okay, we're here at Gary, we've got to run, we've got our next guest, Tarkin Mayner coming on, um, CEO of Wise now with Dell, sold this company to Dell, we're going to get the scoop on that. Gary, thanks a lot, we really enjoy the conversation. We want to continue with you guys because you guys are right at the uh, front edge, uh, helping people cross the chasm around data infrastructure and what we think will be an evolving conversation of the operating system of how the cloud works. So. Totally by the vision, great, great job, congratulations. Well, thanks for having me and uh, good luck with the rest of the show. Thanks, Gary. We'll be right back into this break with Tarkin Maynard.